So these amazing little creatures, which you can see there's one right there, there's one there, and there's one up there. You just oh, went for a little zoom. Uh, these guys are called um, are called um, jumping bristle tails, uh, which are from a group called Achaea nafa. Now this particular species is um, Petrobius martimus, and um, it's typically found along rocky coastline habitats at the high water mark. However, and also you know, like seaside caves and those sort of things. However, you can find populations of these like further inland, um, and these guys came from the inland population, and they've been doing quite well in the setup. But it's been, been here for about a year, and I've you know got a load of them breeding in here and just you know running around and doing things. Most of them are hiding right now because I've got this big old bright light, and they don't like it. They're like, oh yeah, don't don't like the light. It's horrible. It's mean. It's nasty. You stupid man, waving this around in our face. Um, but these guys are from a group, as I said before, called the Kea Nafa. Now, Kea Nafa means ancient jaw, um, which is in reference to their prehistoric jaw shape, um, compared to modern day invertebrates and or insects and that lot. And you see he's gone to the, uh, the, um, straw right now, it's decaying. And while it's kind of hooked shape, you can see a little hook at the front of his face. There he goes, go on. Um... It looks quite fierce, but in reality, it can't do anything. They eat decaying plant matter, like this stuff down here, as well as moss, lichen, and algae. So, yeah, they are quite harmless to all other animals. They don't really bother anybody. Um, and they've been around for a very long time, as ancient, you know, the name Ancient Jaw would indicate. These guys have been around for about 420 million years, between 350 and 420. Um appearing in the mid-Devanian period, which, to put things into perspective, dinosaurs went extinct about 65, 66 million years ago, so these things are ancient. He's like, oh, it's a woodlouse. I don't like woodlice. <laughs> Racism! <laughs> um, but no, anyway, uh, these guys, um, these guys are cool. And, um, and it, what's, they've got so many quad cool adaptations. You can see the hook there between the antennae now, a bit clearer on this one. Um, so, the tail, you can see... There's um, three long prongs on the tail end, and this is why I call jumping bristle tail because they can jump, and they have these little um, bristly tails. Um, and these guys can jump about thirty centimeters in length, which you know is very impressive for such you know such a small animal. I mean, that one's right against the glass there, and you can kind of see how small they are, and they can jump about thirty centimeters in length. Um, and considering most of the animals try and eat them are things like ants and beetles and those kinds of things, you know it's. <laughs> they they got no chance against that, but in the unlikely event they got grabbed by a beetle, say say they're inside a crack and they got cornered and they couldn't escape properly and they couldn't just you know jump away, um, they got a final defence and that final defence is see how their body's quite shiny, well it's shiny because it's covering these little teeny tiny scales like you know how um you know when you when you, you know when you were a kid and you grabbed a moth or a butterfly and you had that weird dust on your hands afterwards and your parents were like don't grab the moth or the butterfly that's the fairy dust and you upset the fairies. Um, fairies, not furries, fairies. <laughs> um, anyway, um, it's the same kind of thing. So that dust is actually little teeny tiny scales that are found on the butterfly's wings. And these guys are covered in scales just like that. So when a beetle grabs onto it, he's like, grabbed on, he's like, you know, they're kind of wrestling, having a little death match going on. Then he'll wiggle around and shed these scales. And then he'll be able to wiggle free and then jump off. And so the beetle will just have a mouthful of scales left and nothing else. And then these scales will regrow after a molt. <laughs> And unlike most um, invertebrates, these guys continue to molt their whole entire life. Even once they've reached the adult stage, they continue to they continue to molt, uh, which allows them to exploit this scale, this um, scale ability more or less indefinitely. Um, and um, they can live for about four years, which you know, for a small animal, a you know, small little bug, it's you know longer than most of your hamsters at home. So it is quite impressive, even even longer than most pet rats. <laughs> So it's quite, it is quite impressive, really, uh, seeing how long these things can live for. Um, and hopefully they'll continue to be here long after we're gone. They've been here long before we've been here. And hopefully whenever we end up killing ourselves, you know, as, as a species, these things will just continue. Who knows? They, they might, maybe it's not the cockroaches that will take over. Maybe it's these little bristle tails that will take over the world. <laughs> That'd be quite cool.